premier placé. I am becoming increasingly conscious of the fact that I keep moving in front of the camera. It was a, it was a total mistake to put that space there, but there was no, it's, it's a really restri restricted space we have there. They've basically got as much space as possible, but then there wasn't much other option as far as positioning the table and stuff like that. And so I had to keep that space free and <laughs> people just keep walking in front of the camera. But anyway, welcome back, round six. Both these players are on four and one. The person that wins this game is guaranteed to make top. The other person is at risk of being knocked out. Let's start the timer. <coughs> 13, left, one hour 13, start. Sefa. And Pack uh, starts us off with the Scarif base pilot carrying Emperor Palpatine. That I've done that silly thing with <laughs> I've not put in uh, error checking to get rid of that double list. 
thingy yet, so let's go back and get rid of this guy, <coughs> Emperor Palpatine. There we go, he's gone. Emperor Palpatine, advanced sensors, proton torpedoes, fifth brother, uh, Darth Vader Duke uh, on Whisper. <coughs> wow, fifth brother on Redline. Okay. Really interesting. A different build. So it's like, even though I'm looking at like Imperials again, it's a little bit different. On Florent is playing um, with Black Sun Assassin. I've not seen any Star Vipers in a while that weren't a Guri. Dalanobaros, a uh, crack shot. Inertial Dampener, shield upgrade. Oh, well, we didn't do that shield upgrade, did I? that back um, uh, Zuckus with crack shot and Tokyo Marks with Moldy Crow title so an interesting a couple of off the wall lists here so that's something that's made uh, my day a little bit more interesting uh, like I, I was saying earlier we, I've seen 10 players so far 12 with these two and uh, 8 of them were Imperial players and 2 were Scum players so now that total's gone up to 9 Imperials and 3 Scum players and no Rebels but please do bear, keep in mind we will be looking for Rebels when we get to the top cut tomorrow top 32 we will be looking for Rebel players we've not seen any Rebel players today so we'll be, we'll be interested in seeing which ones make their way through to the top 32 He's Segnord with um, a really interesting kind of S-bend Segnord loop with the Scarif base pilot on the back side of the table. And looks like he's trying to come and flank uh, Florence. List from the other side. So 166 players, um, 32 make the cut tomorrow, giving us another five rounds tomorrow. Let's just turn that table mic down a little bit, we're getting a lot of the background noise. Let's make it a bit more intimate. Once again, thank you all for joining us. Uh, let's see how many we got right now. We've got um, 104 players. They're still playing uh, the system open in Poland. 104 viewers, I should say. Uh, this is the last round. We get to see from this game whether or not we can get one or both players into the top cut. If they've got a pretty good MOV. Oh, that was it. Sebastian, ranking. Ranking. Ranking? I already sent you. No? This up the round five. <laughs> And just to make sure we're clear, uh, on the player camera, you are seeing a strobing effect. That's something to do with the, with the lights here in the, in the venue. Uh, I've not been able to get rid of that so far. And yeah, of course, uh, about around about the same time as when uh, the... <coughs> When we shut down here, we expect the Australian Open, Australian National to be starting up again. 169 players in Poland, 166 players in Paris today. Let's see. And you can follow the Polish stream over on Raven Squadron. Go search Raven Squadron on Twitch. And Onyx Squadron on Twitch for when the Australian Nationals start up again.
Okay. Okay, so yeah, uh, so a very cautious opening from both players. We're getting underway. So they go back to Dar, so let's, have, let's take advantage of that moment there to take a quick look at the leaderboard after round five. Uh, yeah, don't, so ignore where it says round six at the bottom. <laughs> Lachie Allen is still in first place. Uh, Luan Dussat, Lucas Bolak, uh, Julien jalife Ardan, Nicolas Durand, who we saw beat Alex uh, Burt in the last round, Adrian uh, Coquet, uh, Francois Coe, Oriol Barnes. Uh, Phil GC from the X-Wing Hipster blog. Cormac Higgins also doing very well in 10th place. Paul Mandin, Arnard Cotier, Alex Burt, who we saw lose the last round, but still holding on pretty with a very strong MOV. Messi. Uh, let's see what else we got. Maxime Hermes, uh, Thierry Ameline. Full, full, full on. So, like the 186, like really he heavily represented in, in the top 16 with uh, Alex, Phil, Cormac, Paul. Really heavily present represented. Four players from the top 16 and 186 squadron players. Um, let's see what else we've got. Eric Zaun, Manish Falhalba, Francois David Cosnal, Rafael Sivde. Sivde. <laughs> Obviously, that's not his name. He's just kind of abbreviated his surname. Nicolas Banger. Florian Menu, who we're seeing now, is in 22nd place. He's got a pretty healthy MOV amongst the forum ones. Uh, Yves Marie Vincent, Pierre Antricardo, uh, 24th place. Uh, Diego Arabati, Abril Gio, oh, a Spanish player, and Donny Abril uh, joins Oriol Barnes in the top, top 32. <laughs> Roman Poisson, Al Alberto Nogales. Also, so three Spanish players, four with Jon, if you count him, and Louis Venocher rounding out. And there's a lot of the um, Les Tetes Brûlées, which is the, uh, the local f Parisian uh, X-Wing squadron. Uh, they've got players such as uh, Nicolas Durand. Um, who else? Adrian Coquet. Uh, no, 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 Adrian no is, isn't, Adrian isn't uh, from Les Tetes Brûlées. Uh, Durand. I'm going down this, I'm trying to remember. Uh, Maxime Hermes. Louis Venache, and maybe a couple more that I don't, I'm not familiar with their names. Okay, and. Pack starts maneuvering with a decloak from Whisper forward as well. Not often you see that. Thank <laughs> you. 
So if I had one, if there was one more um, wish list I could have for Cryodex, it would be, well, first we've got the problem that <laughs> tournaments aren't taking, uh, aren't using, um, I'm using my software for registration. <laughs> That's number one. Uh, I, the, if you've been watching uh, the web, the Facebook page, I've been doing these stat breakdowns of the tournaments I've been involved with, and um, there's a. Uh, it's it's pretty easy to do that as long as you have the cooperation of just being able to get all the lists together easily. And in this case, that wasn't the case. Um, but the situation was a. Uh, I've got that software that basically allows you to register players within like 10 seconds. They just show up. You just got to tell them how to make their list correctly. They show up, scan their QR code, and done. You just check how many points it is. Check they've pointed their they've they've listed their asteroids on their on their list, and that's it. It's done. Um, and then that generates a file you can then import into Cryodex, which also includes the faction information, so we get all the factions. If uh, you saw what we did at Nerf Herder two weeks ago, the ranking screen was a lot more. A lot more visible, a lot more, a um, lot more populated with ranking, with faction information and stuff like that, which is something I can do as long as the faction information is in Cryodex. But at the moment, because we're not able to get people behind uh, that situation, it's um, it's not quite working out as well as I hoped. We, uh, w what I'd like then is if we manage to use that to import faction data into Cryodex seamlessly would be then to have Cryodex show the faction that each player has on the pairing screen so that I could and it's literally it's something that's only useful for me <laughs> so I know he's not going to do it but I could just flick through the top 10 tables and just look if I'm looking for rebels looking for rebels and trying to avoid the imperial imperial matchups trying to avoid the scum scum matchups trying to find a matchup that's a little bit more interesting rather than as I do now I just basically go by names I just look through the top couple of tables and look by name The problem with the table and that cardboard that we've got on it, it's just it's moving around too much. Where do I go to find my whispers? Okay, so anyway, um, once again, uh, thanks for all for joining us. Please bear in mind that this uh, this stream is brought to you thanks to the support I do receive on Patreon. Uh, I'm not I'm not getting enough. I'm not getting much money as it is, but uh, what I do get goes straight into transport and being able to get to these tournaments across Europe, uh, which isn't easy. Uh, but I, I managed to do okay out of it. Uh, I get very, I get lucky sometimes as well with some flights and stuff. Um, but yeah, anything you can give me would be greatly appreciated and makes it possible to have even more tournaments in the future. Uh, I would like to possibly manage to do uh, all the system opens that are left in the UK, uh, in the in Europe. Sorry, uh, we've got another. Isn't it? Isn't it seven we've got so far? Madrid, that's going to be easy. Uh, UK, I'm definitely want to go to that. Um, I'd like to go to Holland this year. I'm, uh, I've been I've been such good friends with the Amsterdam squadron and the Dutch guys through X-wing for such a long time. I really want to get over there and spend some time with those guys and really get to know their local community. Uh, I would have liked to go to Poland, like I said earlier today. It was a, kind of a question of if I go to Poland, then maybe France doesn't get a stream. If I go to if I go to Paris, then I know that there will be one of the two major streams in. Uh, Poland will be present so it means you get two separate European streams this weekend if I'd have gone to Poland you'd have probably had two separate from the same event if the other guys had, had, had come along to stream alongside me um, 
<clears throat> which is something I'm not really a fan of lately. I don't really like um, go having multiple streams at a tournament. I think it makes uh, it. Uh, it's obviously it's great for you guys to have a lot of options, but it means that the viewer experience becomes a lot more diluted. I try and make it a question of bringing the tournament home to you as much as possible, which is why I use camera angles like this. Uh, and typically, uh, in this camera angle, you would see the rest of the tournament in the background. We've kind of fenced, they kind of fenced them off here uh, because they figured that would be a good idea. And um, that's working, it's fine. It means I've got less noise on the table microphone. But um, I prefer that when, when you can see the other games being played in the background, you can see, you might recognize someone in the background. Sometimes people walk past waving because they know their friends are watching. Uh, we had a situation last week at the Nerf Header Open where the video, the cameraman's to catch one of the um, local players in the background doing a silly little dance just by chance. And it's that kind of thing. I'm trying to bring the tournament experience home to you. That's why you get rankings on screen. That's why uh, I, I try to give as much statistical information on the event as possible. It's just about making it feel that like this wasn't just a thing where you just you're just caring about whichever list did well. Uh, trying to make it more a question of how do I find my whisper? Okay, so Pax friends, obviously, are, um, what do I need to do here? I need to go here. Ah, oh, there we go. I've got it. Whisper, Casperion, copy, go back to chat. Oh, I'm already there. I've got two of them going now, and we'll paste this. Okay, so yeah, as much... Uh, Every single contribution received on um, Patreon is greatly received. Obviously, I'm not in a situation where I can do all sorts of rewards and crazy stuff like some of the other guys do. Uh, I spend all my time and money uh, getting into uh, as many tournaments as possible. And <laughs> Back, um, so there's obviously a lot of rivalry in France among the teams, uh, the Nantes squadron. <laughs> Have uh, uh, have dropped their flag over the the background, and and Pack ha was having a good old look at it. And Pack on the back of his shirt, he's got um, the SR two A squadron from his local area, uh, where their symbol is Merci beaucoup. Yeah. Uh, where their um, their symbol is, um, I don't know what you call it, but when you it, there's two hands putting up the middle finger, that's kind of like their their favorite way I'm not sure if it had anything to do with Mr. Bean that Mr. Bean holiday movie where the girl drives past in the car and he waves at her and she sticks the finger up <laughs> so maybe that had something to do with it uh, and then the, the other thing is there's a big glass of beer and the foam on top is uh, formed into two large mammary glands uh, so they've kind of like tried to embody <laughs> their team spirit in that logo and I think they've done a pretty good job of it <laughs> so yeah, due to the way that they, um, they set up their registration today, it wasn't really possible to collect lists as I had done in other tournaments as effectively. Uh, and so, and also because I was busy, I arrived quite late yesterday and didn't have much time to set up, and so I had to do a lot of my setup this morning. So that made things a bit more difficult for me. It's not like other events where I'm just kind of like in the morning before round one starts and just kind of chilling, talking to people. Today was a bit more hectic. <laughs> Nantes Squadron, uh, famous for the elephant symbol. They, uh, the Nantes region of, of, of France is, uh, ha uses an elephant as like a symbol, and they've converted that symbol to be uh, an Imperial 8080 Walker as their squadron logo. And I can't remember why the elephant, what the elephant has to do with Nantes, but I know, I think, I think it's got something to do with like in the middle of the town, there's like on the street map, it makes an elephant shape. There's like a shape of an elephant. Uh, 
And if you don't feel like subscribing uh, to Patreon, then please, and you have Amazon Prime, don't forget you can drop an Amazon Prime subscription. Uh, they call it a subscription. It's not a subscription. It's just kind of like a tip token. Every month you get like a couple of these tip tokens, and you can just gift them to uh, gift them with tea to your favourite streamers uh, on uh, uh, Twitch Prime. There's that that squadron logo. <laughs> I don't know if he's doing it on purpose. When I first met him at the European Championship in 2017, he uh, he has a T-shirt on, uh, and on his on the the sleeve on his T-shirt, it says it's like his his name amongst the squadron in his squadron group is a uh, especialist de verge, which is like um, a virgin specialist. Which uh, I suppose you could take as being a double entendre, as the French use virgin as. Uh, say as for when you roll blanks whereas the Americans would say natty if you roll all natural results if you roll all blanks in French you're a, a virgin specialist it's an interesting position he's got here he's got um, he's got red line and whisper kind of set to kind of like just kind of barrel charge down on the on the flank Hmm. And so in that European Championship game, where I think he played off against um, Wojtek Sza from Poland, he made sure to stay on the same uh, on the side of the camera, where everyone would see the uh, Virgin Specialist. Um, insignia on his sleeve. see anything when you do that man I lose my temper <laughs> I just think he's doing it because he knows his shirt's getting on camera and gets one two uh, three re-rolls for the target lock gets a crit and one evade takes three shields from Dallin Oberos So back to dials then. Just to, just that one attack. Really well positioned there by Pack, being able to keep out of arcs and range, and yet being able to get just one attack in and pretty heavy one as well.
Oh, we got a damage card as well. Oh well. <clears throat> it's a damage sensor array. No, it isn't. It's a. Uh, which one is it? Structural damage or damage sensor? Array? Structural damage. And Dino Bros. So what happened there? Maybe it was uh no I don't know. Hmm because no, nope. so it's not that. Uh is it? Let me have a look. No idea. Whisper attack too? I don't know. This is obviously this is going to be the big engagement now. So it's a, it, it's a longer planning phase. They need to be a lot more particular about what they're going to do, and Flo needs to be careful. Florian needs to be especially careful. He's not um, putting himself into a position where he's going to take a lot of damage this round because uh, 
Pack has got things. Pierre Anthony has got things very lined up to just kind of smash through. And uh, oh wow, so D cloaks to the to starboard. No, didn't see that coming. I expect him to go to to port and backwards to just kind of follow up death rain, but maybe trying to trying to prevent. Maybe the maneuver with a bump. I'm not sure. Yeah, one straight, one straight. Yeah. To bank to port by Torquil. Hmm. Thinking about what action he's going to do. I'm fine. Thank you. So there must have been some kind of an exchange earlier that we didn't see. Well, I didn't, I didn't notice because... Red Lions lost a shield, as well as Dan Overus had lost an extra shield before starting. They must have had an exchange at some point. Like a range free, one damage. What the? So just coming up to the halfway match point of the match now, and <clears throat> they're getting into their first engagement phase. It's been a very cautious opening, and they're using uh, the Nick Bergen's uh, Nick Bergen's uh, target locks, the the Torifal, the Torifil, 3D target lock tokens. Thanks, Pack. <laughs> it seems to be a, a question. So he, he, he stressed himself out by doing a linked action. With his advanced sensors. And then his maneuver was red, so he's done us two straight. Hmm.
doing an interesting flexibility there of being able to choose between a two straight or a, a red maneuver. Good position for Whisper to be in. Uh, got got the rock from uh, against uh, Torkill, Dallin, and Zuckus, and only really got any um, any risk of fire coming from the Black Sun Assassin. Is it Black Sun Assassin or Black Sun? Yeah, Black Sun Assassin. <laughs> Rolls one hit, two crits. Looks like. Damaged engine. Right here? No. <coughs> okay. I didn't manage to see the, the, the code before we put it up down. Uh, let me have a look, see if I can work out which one it is. No. Maybe a wounded pilot. No, because that would be a pilot. It's like it's a ship on the card. Definitely looks like it's his ship. Hull breach, maybe. If I had to guess, I'd say hull breach. So wait, how many cards has he got? He's got four cards now on that land. Dalan fires on red line. Gets one hit and a crit. Rolls a focus. Uses the force to block it and takes one damage. Oh, it's on Whisper. Oh, this is getting silly. I'm looking up and down. I have to get myself into a better position to do this. <coughs> Red line is his last two shields. Three hits, rolls evade, focus, spends this force token, so takes one shieldless whisper. 
Oh, did he manage to get it back somehow, did he? No? Okay. So one hit, three blanks, rolls evade. And crack shots. This is Torquil rolling on Whisper for a rock at range 3. Gets one hit, blank focus, spends focus for free after a reroll, and three of eights. Uh, you get one, two, and a crit. Uh, I'm not sure what that was, but uh, he's taking cards. One. Uh, panic pilot. Looks like a dead ship, regardless of how you look at it. It's an interesting list uh, from Florin because you, it's not really clear which is the big gun that you want to go after first. I mean, Dalon, Dalan, Zakus, Torquil, not really like big names in themselves. Like, how do you try and work out which one you want to take down first? So Whisper firing on Torquil for the rock, range 3 I think. Rolls two blanks and a hit. And gets two evades. He focus, jukes it. Nothing. And that's the end of combat, they go back to dials. Okay, so we're going on. And Pax got things in his favor right now. He's managed to take out Dallin off the table for very little exchange of damage on his side. And leaving uh, the rest of Flo's list to do the heavy lifting. And I'm guessing the next uh, target on Pack's list is going to be the Zuckers. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Not really. <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's because of points. 
I guess. Zuckett's 48 points, Black Sun Assassin 49 points, Tokyo Mux 48 points. They're all pretty much the same. Maybe that's what made him go for Dallin, first of all, is that Dallin was the most expensive ship on the table, on Flo's side of the table. But, um, yeah, not quite sure if... Um, where... What his target priority is now. I mean, obviously, the Zuckus is probably the one that's easiest to get off the table just because it's got one defense die. I don't know. We can even see what Pax deciding for his maneuver. Too straight. This is why I've taken their phones off them. <laughs> More than anything else. <laughs> Silly little things like that. Definitely has something to do with uh, the strobing effect. Definitely has something to do with color, because on the right side of the screen, it's pretty much the whole length of the screen. On the left side, it's just the top. Close to port. Is it quite, is it painted like a, a ghosty white, or is, is it just the, the, the extreme glare of the light? I think it is. It's kind of it's kind of been undercoated. It's like it's been base coated. Jams the Tokyo removes the focus token. Hmm. Tokyo seems to be doing a, a free bank to Starbo, which is red. So stressed and doesn't have a. No? Oh, okay, it's not red. Looks, looks red. I'm not dying. Okay. That's it. The Black Star Assassin barrel rolling to starboard and focusing. Je perds mon stress en action, je prends un focus. 
Yeah, so it does look like Zuckus is the target this round. And with nine hit points, um, I don't know. I mean, it's got a range one attack from Scarif. He's got a range, well, I'm assuming they get as far as Scarif. But. So Whisper goes for Vader. Two focuses and a blank from Whisper. Spends the focus, gets two. Zuckus rolls, two evades. Duke's one, gets two anyway. <coughs> Zuckus returns fire on Scarif base pilot. Uh, whoa. Two and two. Two hits, two crits. And Scarif base rolls a blank and a focus, uses the force from Emperor Palpatine to and, and take two crits. One shield, two, and a crit. I just put my shield on. And that's um, structural damage. No. Damage sensor array, and that's a console fire. So the Two hits, I have to spend the focus token. And three blanks, Specialist de Verge. focuses no just what two and they go in on Zuckus two hits three hits looks like that was off the board let us see that but he takes another two shields oops and they go back to dials hmm so yeah, things definitely going in Pax's favor here. He's not really uh, lost too much uh, uh, in this game so far. Only really lost half points from the Scarif base pilot, but still keeping things pretty much alive.
Okay. So. Looks like he's getting ready to to kill this game. There's just over 15 minutes left. And there's not really been much action at all from either side. Bumps up with Scarif, right? Scarif base pilot. Scarif race pilot? What? Tokyo does a two bank to starboard. Focuses. Black Sun Assassin. One banks to port and then barrel rolls further to port, getting himself in a good position behind Whisper. Zuckus also bumps. Oh no, maybe not. He's got like he must have a longer maneuver. They're trying to get him, get the scary face pilot out of the way, to see if he sh Oh yeah, he should do. He should make it through with that. Okay. 4K turn. No, just straight. Yeah, of course. And the same with Whisper? No. No, 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 no. Whisper doesn't care to her. Okay. So now he's um he's in a situation where he's gonna have to bring <coughs> Whisper back around, the Scarif base by the signal loop next turn. Uh, right now he's in a situation that he's not going to get many shots off this turn and time's running down <laughs> for now it's not that decisive a victory for for, for pack uh, Florent uh, could easily take some more points off the board in red line uh, and whisper just getting another two hit points on red line one on whisper and he's got half points for both of those yeah let's have a look we got a focus and we got a hit to defense target lots of re-roll the blanks gets hit hit crit Spends the force to convert the token. Is that fifth brother? So it's a crit, yeah. And it looks like we've got one hit and three crits. Rolls a focus. Spends the focus. And takes three crits. Oh, I don't know. Uh, it might be blind. It might be panicked pilot. And he's got two stress. I don't know. I can't see what he's doing. No idea. Uh, let's just wait. I can't even hear what he's saying. One, two, three. He's got four cards on it at the moment. Stays alive. Okay, so something happened. <laughs> uh, maybe it was a console fire? <laughs> he rolled a die? Uh, maybe? When he engaged? I don't know. 
So it's a evade, two focuses, spends the force token to get two, and uses uses Palpatine to evade one. Two blanks, nothing going on there. So not a good round for um, Flo at all. Uh, Pax still has all three ships on the table and very little damage taken that turn, whereas um, Flo lost Zuckus in a hail of fire. Now it's just a question of whether or not that Black Sun Assassin and Tokyo Max can scratch some points off of Pack before the end of the match in about 10 minutes. I get the impression, yeah, now, so now Pack's going to play for time. He's going to reposition. He needs His, his punish is going to come up with a blue maneuver to remove stress, uh, giving space for for Whisper to 4K and the Scarif base pilot to Signal's loop uh, and to come back around and have them joust with the Black Sun Assassin before eventually maybe chasing down Tokyo Marks if there's time. He forgot the console fire from the previous round for Scarif Base Pilot. Flo's got his dials down. Pax is giving a, them all a second look. Segnors adaptive area runs to the to port and then hard turn then. Yeah, a hard one turn. Support bringing himself about face to pretty good idea. <laughs> okay, um, so. ah, okay. Now Tokyo two turns to starboard. Also bring himself up. Focuses as an action. Black Sun Assassin. Oh no, he's going to boost as well. 
Look at that mouldy crow. Excellent assessing one banks to the, to starboard. Uh, and he's going to do a barrel roll, but I don't think it will fit. Can it? Ooh. Ooh. No. <laughs> like a glove slotting in uh, behind there and that gives uh, Whisper the perfect space to pull off a 4k uh, who knows five minutes left to go in the round <laughs> the sneaky photographer doing it again um, and Whisper does the 4k brings himself back around uh, all three arcs now on um, all three arcs on Black Sun Assassin I reckon so <coughs> Blacks on Assassin fires first. And he's not in range. Tor kill. Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah. Yes. Tor kill. Two and a blank. Focus and blank. Used his Palpatine. To get one evade and takes a face down damage card on red line. Oh, sweet bite. I didn't pack fire. Did he forget the console fire again? Oh no, no, now he's doing... Why is it doing... What? Same, right? Something weird happened that I'm not aware of. Ooh. And Flo becoming more frustrated as time goes on. Three minutes to go in the round. Back to dials. <laughs> All right, Tokyo gave red line pilot skill zero and Whisper is out of range. Okay. I was all like, what the hell? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> okay. And even so, like, and obviously Redline's got no um, torpedoes left. So he's hoping that this round he wants to make his way up and just kind of, uh, just gently, just kind of nudge his way into range one. And a good uh, a good synergy on on Pack's list with uh, having force carriers. Yeah. 
gagne pas du bail, il a fait du stress. Whisper D close to port. That was the console fire again. Um, Jams Torquil. Removes the focus. Torquil. Oh, he might just fit. No, maybe not. Oh yeah, he did, he fit. Wow, excellent. Um, let's see where, how, how the Black Sun Assassin gets out of this. But yeah, it looks like the Scarif base got used as a, as a solid blocker. Okay, so that's the end of the round. Uh, this is going to be the last round of combat. That's the end of Swiss for today as well. Remember, we'll be back tomorrow with five more rounds, top 32, starting at 9 a.m. Oh, and Whisper fits as well. Oh, gosh. Okay. So now the Black Sun Assassin has an opportunity to lay some serious damage onto Whisper at range one. And maybe Whisper's probably got Arc on him as well. It's a bit... Maybe only just out of Arc. So... Does Torquil, PS0, Whisper, or Redline? Is that what's going on here? Or can he only do it with to people that are in his arc? Okay, so the Phantom goes down to pit pilot skill zero, meaning that red line should fire first. If I'm um, I think they're saying that Whisper's not got arc on the Black Star Assassin. But that's a good thing. He wants to fire he wants to fire on Talk Hill regardless. It's the end of the game. Let's wipe Torquil off the board and take as many points home as possible. Looks like a crit and a blank. Uh, Rerolls the blank, gets a hit. I 
I think she, uh, one evade. So just takes the shield off, the last shield off a of talker. I've obviously lost another shield somewhere I don't see. And now it should be the Black Sun Assassin's turn to return fire. We got one hit, evades. Okay, so red line, two hits on Torquil, one evade, takes one damage. And so now I think it's Whisper that's firing. Two hits, focus gets spent, takes another one. That's the end of the game, one hit point survives Torquil. Merci. Uh, finally, I, I won. Finally, on your stream. On your stream. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you been on? Three times. Uh, three times. Yeah. Two, three two times. Uh, European uh, two years ago. Yeah. And, in uh, in 2017 is, uh, and the national, national in 2017. National last year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, last year wasn't a very good stream. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's much better. Very nice PS. It was. It was cursed. It was cursed that day. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, so you had a pretty good match up there. Yeah. Huh? It was it was something. I mean, he had a very unconventional list. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't. It's not a typical scum list that we're yeah. used to seeing. Uh, and so, what was your your thinking as far as target priority was concerned? Because oh. um, the ability of Dalan, mm -hmm. if he he take a whisper on Ibo's eyes, he yeah. can strip me off uh, my, all of my shields. Uh -huh. Two time and uh, whisper lose. All of this shield. Oh, okay. So uh, I concentrate on all of my fire power on Dalan. Okay, right, and it worked out pretty well. For you. you got it. You got him off the board pretty quickly because yeah. he was killed quickly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my red line is uh, very aggressive. Yeah, of course. Uh, I don't uh, need to have a focus for yeah. uh, doing a lot of damage and a lot of crits. Yeah, and you have a, a good force synergy as well. What yeah. with fifth brother Darth Vader yeah. and Emperor Palpatine. Uh, you can spread things out pretty easily and, and taking advantage of those yeah. force tokens to modify dice a lot. Uh, so that worked pretty well for you. Um, what do you think... Uh, go on. Now, each point of force uh, with a ship uh, with just one agility, yeah. it's like a focus. Yeah. So uh, Palpatine exactly. is a focus. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, what, would, what would be the sort of list that you find difficult? In versus... Uh, in for, for you, in yeah. Maybe Torquil. 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 Yeah. Because uh -huh. uh, his ability, uh, he, he raises, uh, he's uh, down my, my he initiative. Knows, yeah. Uh, yeah. Zero. Know. Yeah. It's very difficult for uh, Whisper. Uh huh. Uh, I can't uh, gain my second evade uh -huh. this time. So uh, it's a problem. Okay. But. Uh, but, first. but like for tomorrow, for the yeah. for the top. Yes. Okay. What kind of lists do you find difficult to play against with your list? Uh, with my list. Yeah. What is it that is kind of like your? Maybe maybe a scum swarm with scum swarm. Uh, Drea, Hill, uh, and Hitler, the Jakus uh, and, and, yeah. uh, and Z. Yeah, and the Z. Okay. Uh, a teammate to play. Uh, one of the yeah. Of the okay. Well, obviously, you guys had a lot of fun over there yeah. with uh, your shirt showing up <laughs> plenty on stream, and they had they hung their their flag over the, <laughs> and then <laughs> we could see. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, felicitations. Merci uh, à demain. Oui. Uh, uh, 
Bon <laughs> chance. Merci à deux heures. Ouais. <laughs> Thank you and don't come back. Oh, tell me, this yeah. this thing, I, w I was thinking the other day, did this come from the Mr. Bean film? Oh, no, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. <laughs> oh, um, I come back. Okay, okay he's coming back. <laughs> Oh, he's going to grab something from the table, and he's coming back. Because uh, last year we have a, a cool card. Yeah. A cool predator a cool card. card yeah. uh, this year, uh, I give you, ah. I think, very important to focus. To focus. Yeah. With the with the with the finger as well. <laughs> and for the and for the treat. The uh, same. Oh, okay, Before for Chris as well. Well done. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank uh, you again. À demain. À demain. Okay, so that's it from us. Uh, I'll hang around.